Yeah, very true. Yeah, let me just quickly do some organizational stuff. I usually do it beforehand, but I was, uh, I Don't basically just got to my PC, so I need to get everything working. While I am doing the organizational stuff, I'm going to hit you with the disclaimers. Um, actually, man, talking is difficult, like, yeah. while, while doing this stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, there we go. Uh, oh, that's the wrong thing. Wait. Uh, you shouldn't have been talking while you were doing this. You yeah, true, it. true, true. Okay. There we go. So, number one, everything that you say, do, or show me during the session is completely confidential. Number two, take notes. And yep. number three, the mantra that I follow with these sessions is once a coachy, always a coachy, which means that even before or... Uh, yeah, no, not before, even um, in between or after your sessions, you can mm -hmm. just send me a DM and I am going to get back to you as quickly as I can. Okay? Awesome. Yeah. Okay, good. So the way we're going to structure this is because your form is very, very extensive. Sorry. Um, no, 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 that's good. It's, it's good because it means I that I have a lot of... I, 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 exactly. I have a lot of stuff to work with. Um, so this session is going to be a lot of talking. Okay. Because there's like a lot of interesting bits in the forum that I need to talk about. And there, I just want to tell you so you don't, you know, sometimes people get kind of stressed because they're like, oh, there's only 20, 20 minutes left in the session and we haven't gone over the VOD. Um, because you have three sessions, this first session is going to be a lot of talking. We're going to try to go over replay, but, you know, it depends on how much talking we do, right? Ultimately, sure. I'm going to do whatever is best for you, um, which means that maybe we won't go over a VOD until the second session. Totally fine. So good. We're gonna go through this step to bottom. I'm just gonna start with some easy questions. Um, okay. Can you can you tell me a little about your your history? You know, like you said, you started playing seriously in 2018. So you've been playing yeah. the game for like two and a half years now, basically. What got you into the the, the competitive side of, of things for Overwatch? What well, what made you interested? I had some friends that uh, I teamed up with that they played a lot, like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and they were really good. Mm -hmm. And they only play competitive. You know, after a while, they play quick play, quick play, and then they just stop kind of playing quick play and they start playing competitive. And I started, I started playing with them, um, but they outclassed me really fast. So I went, oh, I have to get better at this. So they've moved on. I think they play Valorant now. Mm -hmm. I think they play Valorant now. They moved, they've moved on. They're done with Overwatch. But I'm still interested. It's still fun for me. So that's how I got started was, hey, I need to get better, I need to get better, and then I love Overwatch, it's super fun. So then I just wanted to keep doing calm. Okay. You said that you played, you said you were a top 10 raider in WoW. During what mm -hmm. time? Uh, let's see, so 2013, 2014, what, well, no. That's 2012, like... 2013, 2014. That's like Cataclysm? Uh, yes, Cataclysm had just... Yes, Cataclysm was just launching. That okay. was through Lich King. Okay. So cool. we did... Um, what guild? B2, Black Temple. I, I raided with Chance and Elitist Jerks. Um, okay, I know, I know I Elitist Jerks. I don't know Chance. Yeah, okay. the Chance is a Chinese guild. Oh, that okay. That's crazy. probably why I don't know them. Okay. But yeah, yeah no, I, I do know Elitist Jerks. They were top five jerks. for a while. Yeah. Didn't yeah, Ian like, Hasacostas play with Elitist Jerks during Classic? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Okay, yeah, that's they where came, I know They from. all came from something awful, which is where kind of we all came from. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I remember the infamous Hezekostas rant. <laughs> it's, a, it's a classic. Um, yep. Okay, no, but that's 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 cool. I've been playing WoW basically since uh, I was a little kid, so it's always good to like talk to someone who has played the game. Uh, oh, man, I didn't. I uh, yeah, you know, I wish I could go back into it, but it just takes a lot of time. Um, it does. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 good that you 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 mentioned that because it means that you already know how to, you know, compete at a very very high level. Now the the part that confuses me is why would a you know a, a player of your you know I guess dedication play Overwatch on console? My I don't have a great computer. I actually rebuilt my PC recently, and then someone else gave me a video card. Mm -hmm. Um. I just I picked it up. I I apparently I had an install of it from work. Um, okay. It just I don't know. 
It wasn't the best for me experience wise. I okay. think I farted here's, here's around the and then went back on. Given the type of player that you are, there will come a point where you'd want to switch to PC anyways, because ultimately when it comes to competitive play, it is the premier uh, platform. And okay. the sooner you make that transition, the better for you. You're going to okay. regret it if you put like another year into console and then you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to save up and get myself a PC. Because that transition okay. is going to be hella awkward. And given that you play 30 plus hours a week, you know, those hours are... Most console players tend to be more on the casual side. So with 30 plus hours, like that is very, very significant for a console player. Okay. Right? I mean, honestly, right. it would yeah. be significant for a PC player as well. But that's, I think, where, where that time would be best invested. Okay. Now, yeah, no, I'm not far off from a great PC. Literally, all I need perfect. was a video card. And perfect. now I have perfect. one. I just haven't installed it. Very nice. Now, the part that's concerning, of course, is that clearly you knew what you were doing in, 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 in WoW, you know? Yes. And you're putting in a lot of time. And you've been playing the game seriously for quite some time. Why are you, you know, you, 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 your rating is historic. How, how, why would you say in your own words, are you where you're at? I don't know that I have identified the um, specific areas in which I need to improve. Here's the thing. It's not and, about specific okay. areas. Um, when, okay. when, when a player who puts in that much time is at a rating because there are people who put in a third of the time mm -hmm. and they're at a higher rating than you you know this isn't you being yeah. an average player wanting to become above average you're putting in an a, a, an above average amount of time and you have an above average amount of previous competitive experience but you're at a below average rating so this is like a huge anomaly you know there's like something very very fundamentally wrong about the I way agree. that you approach the game so we need to figure yeah. out what that is. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree. That's yeah. and that's why I started, you know, these sessions was look, I've been mm -hmm. doing this. I'm analyzing my gameplay. I know how to compete. I know what mm -hmm. I should be looking for. Why am I not climbing at all? What is holding me back? Okay. Well, hopefully, once we go through all of the information that you put into this form, we're going to be able to get a little bit closer to the answer. Um, I'm sure, we will. I have faith in you. Oh, I have faith in myself as well. You you, you you need an insane amount of ego in order to succeed in life. It's kind of depressing. <laughs> now, true. the first thing is you said that your main goal is to improve your ability to support your team by learning new strategies, to recognize and correct your mistakes, to improve your game sense, e.g. what will probably happen next, who should I boost? Um, that's a very nice answer, but it's not selfish enough. Um, or not, not selfish, it's not materialistic enough, I guess. Um, you basically, the, the TLDR of your answer is just, I want to get better at the game, which is okay, but it's not sure. very specific. Like what point do you actually want to reach? How far do you want to take this? Well, I'm hyper competitive. So exactly. I, I obviously, I obviously always want to shoot for the top, um, as a gradual process. I don't want to, I'm not looking to be a pro player or anything like that. But you do want to like, see if you can push high top 500. If I could get top 500, that'd be fantastic. Well, I, I mean, definitely have the drive. You, have, you, you sound like a person with two arms, so I don't see what's holding you back. You know, like we're gonna find out, aren't we? We're going to find out, yeah. But like at least physically, like you know, you, you, it's very, 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 very doable. Um, and yeah, your answer was also a little weird because you were mentioning things that are like, especially at your rating, are like not super duper. Like, you know, improve my ability to support my team by learning new strategies. Like you're in silver, yeah. there's no strategies. I know it's fr it's that's one of the things that infuriates me is that I watch and I go you guys are just yeah. randomly running into stuff yeah. like so what am I, I supposed uh, to do with this how so do I, I help you exactly so it feels like you're <laughs> struggling with figuring out how you can actually provide value and like have an impact in your games yeah okay um so what did you do previously to improve you gave me a huge list which I like a huge list you said VOD reviews for comp wins one every four and losses nearly all Sometimes I review solo, sometimes uh, with a friend for another perspective. Okay, that's fine. How frequently do you review? Um, every day. I what? mean, and I try mm -hmm. to do it on a cadence like, I try to allow myself time after, after I've lost, because I mm -hmm. feel like when I look at them right after, I just, just get pissed off. I'm not really analyzing, um, but every day. So right before I start comp, usually I look at my, like I was just reviewing VODs before we did this, um, mm -hmm. because I just lost two comp matches. 
Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I was, I was going to say. No, 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 no. What did you just say? You just lost comp matches and then you reviewed them. No, no, no. I just lost two comp matches. Yeah. I loaded them up because I, I didn't know if I was going to send them to you. Yeah. But no, I also reviewed from yesterday's losses. So usually when you review a vod, how old are those vods? A day, about a day. So you, you you don't review VODs right after you play them, basically? No, because I just get irritated. Okay. I, like, if I lose a game, I'm not going to go review it right away. I'm just pissed, because I'm already pissed off. You know, it, it usually is after a string of losses, right? I'm, I don't feel like I can be objective. If I lose the game, and then I review it immediately after, I feel like I can't, you know, be as objective as I could otherwise. I need time. Absorb. No, I mean that's 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 not a you thing. That's just generally speaking, like how it should be done. Okay. You know, so that's fine. Uh, okay, you watched guides. Uh, Losa on overanalyzed. Message connect with other supports. I noticed play well. Same or enemy team for advice. Uh, I really wouldn't reach out to silver players for advice. Um, it's not really you know. The, the the only person you really need to improve is yourself. Like it, it, it's 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 you don't need to like reach out to other people. Um, Owl Pro VOD reviews. I wouldn't do that either, because that level of play is very very very, you know. Very far away from where you're at right now. So it's 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 kind of like giving a sixth grader college lectures. Like, it's good information, just not super duper relevant just yet. Okay. I usually um, like it for like what what is the template for success and how you know how do I build myself into that template. Mm -hmm. Well, right now you're still at the start of your journey, basically. Like sure. you're you're whenever you're below average at a game, it means that you fundamentally misunderstand something about the game, the way that the game works, or the way that you roll. You know, okay. works. You know, so for example, um, some you're a support player, right? So some support yeah. players, for example, they. Okay, I'm gonna make like a prediction. Okay. okay. As Moira, you probably use your, your, you have like your orb that you can throw out, right? Sure. You probably use the healing orb very often in order to conserve your like healing resource. Oh, or... I use it to double the amount of healing that I do. But yeah, yeah I use my exactly. healing orb. I yeah. rarely throw my damage orb. Exactly. Right. Or as yeah. Anna, okay. you probably use your nade as like an emergency heal when people get low HP. Ugh. Right? No, I mean, I used to, I've stopped that. You used but, to. Yeah, I okay. used to do that a lot. Because I know that's that shouldn't be happening in the first place. I should just be hitting my shots. Here's the, here's the, no, it's not about hitting the shots, right? Here's the thing. Um, I'm, I have had this exact session, I think like eight or nine times so far, you know, like where someone was a competitive raider in world of warcraft right and then they switch over to overwatch and they play support and they fundamentally misunderstand how support actually works okay, okay. so the fact that you just told me that you use moira orb to double your healing shows me that you have that you fundamentally don't understand what support in Overwatch means, okay. right? Which is pretty common because it's very easy to think, oh well, supports in Overwatch, you know, they're kind of like the healers in WoW. You know, they're there to like, you know, keep the team alive and whatnot. Um, that's not what he supports in in Overwatch are because Overwatch's philosophy is very modern, right? Um, if you look at heal specs in WoW today compared to heal specs during classic or TBC, back then heal specs were a lot more supportive. Like if you look at shaman, uh, shaman totems during yeah. TBC, they were very, very supportive, you know, like you had 10 billion different buffs and, 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 and whatnot, you know, like very yeah. traditional support kind of fantasy. But nowadays they're a lot more utility focused, you know, you have like stun totems or, or you know, whatever, I don't, I'm, I don't keep, too up to date on it or if you look oh, at certain play styles you know exactly like you know discipline priest or fist weaver monk 
you know there are a lot yeah. more those are more modernized because blizzard understood that the traditional support you know plopping down a totem that would increase everyone's agility by 26 percent not exactly super engaging gameplay which is why not a lot of people wanted to play healer you know like for a lot of people it just wasn't that exciting so they modernized those specs to make them make make them more exciting like the, like okay. during mop the whole reason that mist weaver was added or like you know as or, or the new discipline priest is to get yeah. more people into healing who normally wouldn't like traditional healing for right dps more and right. exactly and that's basically yeah. all of that experience uh jeff kaplan basically took into overwatch he understands that raw traditional healers if those were in overwatch q times would be through the roof because it's an it's a first person shooter people who play a first person shooter don't want to play a character that does nothing but throw heal orbs and heal their teammates all the time they want to play characters with impact with carry potential that can actually kill stuff and apply pressure right okay so the way that moira for example is being played at a, at, at a high level is heal orb is almost never used there's only three situations where you use heal orb either a to heal someone who is way out of range b to heal yourself because it's the only way you can heal yourself or c if like your entire team is stuck in a grab or something and you really need like as much healing as possible but 90 percent of the time you use your damage orb because it allows you to charge your it's your primary source of ult charge is moira and that allows you to farm up your coalescence which is how moira has an impact in games because it allows her to control when her team engages and that's how Moira's actually carry games. They don't carry games by just healing people because ultimately the amount of damage that the six enemies are going to do will always be higher than the theoretical throughput of the two healers on your team. You can't keep right. your team alive indefinitely, right? right? So in order to actually win team fights and climb, it's not just about keeping stuff. your teammates alive. You need to actually help them kill stuff. And yeah. if one, okay. if your coalescence can get their Ana to half HP, if your orb can get their Genji to half HP, not only do those characters are they easier to kill for your team, but you're also putting more stress on their healers, and you're also making it more difficult for them to play aggressive because they need to wait to get healed, right? So yeah. that's the 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 uh, 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 that's the, the the kind of mindset that you need to have when you play support in Overwatch. You're basically a DPS character that can heal okay that makes sense you know okay. it's interesting that you say that too because i just recently within the past maybe month two months switched to not using my damage orb because i didn't want to be a know, dps just, moira yes moira yeah. right and i yeah. went but i'm but i'm killing stuff you know i'll carry games i, w I was carrying games with yeah i'd have gold limbs and and i'd have gold healing and i'm like yeah. we're winning yeah. why are you shitting on me yeah <laughs> why are you upset about this and yeah. I go, dps moira and i go all right maybe i need to do more healing yeah so but this makes a lot more sense because i mean against a, you know i talk about it all the time with my team like is there a genji on the other team hold on i'll go moira i got this like mm -hmm. he's dead yeah. okay i'm glad you said that okay uh Tracking my deaths on a spreadsheet, I made my own, so I can target how slash why I'm dying specifically and attempt to reduce those deaths. Um, that's a flawed mindset, because ultimately okay. the reducing deaths isn't really what's relevant. Like in, in, in pro players die as 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 well. Um, it's not really about whether you die or not. Uh, deaths only matter if they are the cause for the lost team fight, because sometimes you're going to die after like two people on your team have already died. That yeah. death isn't really relevant. You know, it's not necessarily yeah. because you made a mistake or something like maybe it was avoidable or post postponable, I guess. But yeah. don't focus on reducing your deaths. Focus on understanding why you are losing team fights. Are you losing team fights because they just drag on forever and like no one on the enemy team ever dies? Are you losing team fight because it feels like the enemy team always has twice as many ultimates as you? Do you lose team fights because eventually you just run out of your healing juice as Moira or because you don't have your ultimate most of your teammates or what, what team fights or whatever? Understanding okay. why because that's the goal. You don't want to reduce your deaths. You want to win more team fights. Okay. And often you need to play a certain way where if you do it correctly it's going to win your team fight but if you don't do it correctly you might end up dying but the only way to improve at it is to accept that you're going to die 
if you reduce your deaths, then that's going to change your playstyle in a way where you play so passive and so pussy that you're not actually ever trying to push the limits of your character. You're not really trying to you, to do stuff. So you turn into a heal bot Moira or a heal bot Ana, where you're never going to land those big team fight winning nades, where you're never going to throw out your damage orbs and, and solo kill flankers and whatnot. You're going into this very passive play style, and then it doesn't matter that you're putting in 30 plus hours a, w a week. You can do that for years. But if you have a yeah. play style that is so centered around reducing your deaths, rather than understanding why you're losing team fights and then changing your play style so you can you know, avoid losing team fights, that's how you get better at the game. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and it's, again, it's interesting to hear you say that because I have adapted more of the, you know, oh my god, that diva just ran in. If I run in there, I'm going to die. Nope, I'm out. You yeah. Know, run, run to the back. Hey, how do I not die in this scenario but also keep my team up or enable them to do something else? Exactly. So risk-taking, okay, if it's helping to win team fights. Risk-taking is how you get better at the game. You're not going to, you know, you need to... Um, What's the saying? You know, you need to like, I don't know, you know, when when babies learn how to walk, they're going to, you know, fall down pretty often. Right. And if they go at it with the mindset of, ooh, you know, I don't want to hurt myself, you know, we'd all be crawling into our 40s. Not really that great. Right. But they understand, you know, they're not trying to reduce the amount of times they fall down. They try to reduce the inconvenience caused by not being able to walk. Okay, um, that makes sense. Okay, that was the stupidest analogy that I've ever given. Holy shit. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Checking my competitive stats in a spreadsheet. I made my own to assess overall climb, average win loss per map, map type, and whether playing with my friends has an impact. It does. I play solo now. Okay, well, that sounds a little harsh. Um, yeah, you can <laughs> do, like, you can I was, do. I was losing more SR because they're in a higher tier. And so when I'd lose, I'd lose a lot. And so um, mm, see again, also, again, again, not, again, again. Also, that's no, no, that's yeah. that's that's bad. You did you, you play you, with you, players that are higher, or to play? No, the fact that you played with players that are higher, you mm -hmm. lost games because of it, and so you concluded I should not play with them. You said you play solo now. Mm -hmm. But again, why is that the exact opposite of what you should have done? Because I'm telling you, that was the wrong move. You should have continued yeah, playing no, with I'm them. Listening. I'm listening. Yeah, I'm thinking. Because I need to play with better people so that I can increase my skill set and learn to play with better people on better teams. Exactly. So that I can recognize things at higher tier levels. Understood. Exactly. Got it, it. They, they are giving you an opportunity. Like, why would a higher level player want to queue with a lower level player? Like, they don't get anything out of it. Right? Unless they want to, like, push their ego playing against bad players, right? But when you lose, it means that you're being put against opponents who are better than you and who push you to your limits, who punish your mistakes. And that's how you improve. Okay. Right? So you were trying to maximize the amount of games that you won rather than maximizing the amount of challenge that you were facing and the amount of improvement that you could get out of that. Yeah. Okay? Makes sense. Okay. Um, taking notes during slash after matches well, you're taking notes during a match. Don't do that. You don't have time during a match. Like Overwatch usually, is the most ADHD it, it game in existence. Yeah, it's usually between games where I'm like, why did I? Oh, know? okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. just during yeah, the game. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, of critical mistakes I made or key opportunities I recognized, such as forgetting to track a McCree as he runs around the map. Don't do that because it's very easy to go to like, to for things to be too specific. You really should keep the analysis part of your improvement process to just the VOD review that you do at the start of the day. Once you start playing, you don't focus on whether you win or lose and you don't focus on whether like how you die or whatever. Those things aren't important in the moment. You always think about what you're going to do next. You know, what am I going to do next game? What am I going to do next team fight? What am I going to do, you know, once we push there or when we get that checkpoint or whatever. You don't really have time to to be to be you reflective don't have time to analyze exactly yeah yeah um taking notes for individual heroes as i play them do's and don'ts primarily again same answer just keep that to the voters when you play the okay. game just playing the game is the only thing that should be important to you 
sure. So, and and I guess what I mean right here is like I'll say, okay, I want to work on my Ana, and then I'll play, you know, five, six games and try to focus on Ana if it's, you know, if it's if if that's what I can play, right? Mm -hmm. And then after them, I'll go, okay, I I did not throw my nade enough to, you know, inhibit healing on the other mm -hmm. team. I need to remember that. Or hey, why am I not? Why am I? Why did I run across that stupid first point of King's Row? As Anna, that don't do that. You're just gonna get shot in the head by a Widowmaker. So I'll write, that's the kind of stuff that I'm writing down. I don't know why I need to write it down to remember it. Okay. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Changed my mindset in caps lock. I play with a sticky note next to my TV with the following reminders: maximize my uptime. Be adaptive, prioritize effectively, focus on my play, not others. Keep good game sense. Losing equals puzzle. Smiley face. Oh, that's that's adorable. Yeah, I mean, that's good. You know, I like the mindset. That's good. Um, yeah, I was. I would get really toxic after games. My son <laughs> pointed it out, and I was like, you know what? I you're right. I need to actually just consider that I'm learning every time I lose. I need to do okay. the challenge. Okay. Your biggest weakness: tensing during intense moments instead of remaining calm which greatly impacts my ability to land shots, prioritize effectively, etc. Yeah, um, you're always going to tense up during intense moments. That's kind of why they're called intense. Um, that's not something that you're going to be able to avoid. That's always going to happen. Whenever you get into a situation like that, you're going to play purely off of instinct and off of muscle memory. So the way that you need to think about this is not how do I avoid tensing up during intense moments? That's inevitable. You need to get so good at the game that you can make those decisions about how to position relative to your team, how to use your abilities, that those things become so second nature that even when things get chaotic, you're automatically it's making those correct decisions. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. You can't it's always just, consciously just... think about everything you do. It just has to happen eventually. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Who's your Overwatch idol? Moth exclamation mark. He's so <laughs> cute. Less than three. Okay. Someone has a crush on Moth. Okay. Very, well, very adorable. I'm, sh I'm sure I'm the only one. <laughs> I cannot relate. The amount of crushable people for straight men in Overwatch League is unfortunately fairly limited. But maybe in the future. You have to try harder. You have to change your mindset. Yeah, maybe I need to I need to, you know, see what the other side of the river has to offer. Uh do you Don't warm up before <laughs> Do you warm up before playing? Yes, practice range through my support lineup to trigger muscle memory. That's sometimes arcade. I heard you once tell someone QP is the worst of just how my IQ PC on support. Um the reason I think QP is bad are the same reasons why arcade is bad. You know, it's just a casual environment where people don't really care. Ultimately the only point being warm up is to just get warm mechanically. Um so you know being able to like land shots as anna for example yeah um you just do that in free for all you don't need to do like any random i mean arcade is fine it depends on what arcade like quick play classic for example maybe isn't the best warm-up mm. game mode but like you know team death like the 4v4 team death match like it's not as good yeah. as free for all but like it's fine you know yeah free for all is not always i don't know if it's this way on pc but free for all is not always available yeah again console. that's an advantage of pc because pc has like a more dedicated community community so even yeah. if there is no try hard lobby you can just make one and then within five seconds it fills up oh that's cool okay mm, okay so you wrote down some questions uh what strategies can i start using to stay calm instead of tensing up again there is no yeah. staying calm um because whenever you get okay. Um, eventually, the only way to climb is to be put into games that are very intense. Eventually, you're going to go into a game and you're going to see your first top 500 player on the enemy team. You aren't going to be able to stay calm. There's going to be a lot of pressure on you. You know, you're, you're, when, when, when you're in a game and it's your, your, your game before hitting, like you know that you're going to hit GM after this game. You're not going to be able to stay calm, right? Yeah. But you yeah. can trust that you have practiced the game enough that that is going to you know carry you to the finish line basically okay yeah um what questions could i ask myself during gameplay to improve my game sense eg i currently ask myself am i safe here high noon am i being effective useful how can i provide the most value at this moment um yeah that's good generally speaking what questions you ask yourself depends on what you want to focus on based on what you see in your vod reviews 
right? So for example, once you notice that you're losing team fights because you're unable to charge your ultimate quickly enough as Moira, then you want to focus on, you know, going for more, like using your offensive nades on cooldown more, right? So there is no, there are no general questions. It always depends on whatever you see during your reviews. Okay. Okay. Have I hit my ability ceiling? Is this my maximum potential and I'm unlikely to improve further? Again, no. You just need to be able to kind of take a step back, look over everything you've done in the game and be willing to fundamentally change your mindset. Because again, like this, this whole this whole situation of someone just fundamentally misunderstanding a role because it's different in a different game, like that, that has happened quite often before. You just need to be open to the idea that a lot of things, like a lot of thoughts that you've had about the role, you know, you are going to be very, very different. Okay. And as long as you can do that, you know, I don't really see that there's going to be any issues. Awesome. Uh, okay, additional info. I worked at Blizzard when Overwatch was released. That's actually really funny because I did coach like a Blizzard employee before. Yeah. And they flagged my account for friends and family. And oh, that's so nice. So you get the discount. It's uh oh I don't know about any Aww. discounts, but I get into the whole uh the whole like oh, betas the betas and, and the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was I was I was usually when you get into a beta you get an email, right? And I was checking yeah, but my it'll battle just net. Appear on your, yeah, yeah, on I, your I was watcher. checking my battle net and I was like I was I, I was I wanted to switch from like wow to wow classic. And then I saw yeah. like in development, Shadowlands beta, and I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> interesting. You're like, right. Oh, yeah very nice you know and i feel kind of bad because there's so many people who really want to get into beta and i'm and you know here i am just uh -huh. but yeah i do you know the the, the perks of the job are very nice that's, um, that's how it happens but yeah so you worked at blizzard when overwatch was released and have been playing since launch and a bit before you said you worked so you don't work there anymore no and in fact the last game so i was the policy administrator for all customer support i was responsible for developing oh, okay. all of the customer support policies and titan okay. was the last project that i worked on before i left Oh, okay, okay. Uh, were you, did you, did you leave or were you a part of like the big layoffs? Oh, I left. Happened? Oh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, okay. No, I okay. left. Okay. They don't pay very well at all. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I heard a lot about like the, the, the video game industry, you know, it's a little unfortunate, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's yeah. just how it is. Um, you've never played FPS before, but you love playing Overwatch in all this time. I have never been able to climb out of silver for longer than one or two games. If you're listening to some of your coaching videos, I believe I've probably built up some bad habits that I cannot identify and therefore, therefore cannot fix. Even though I've become very frustrated with my ability to improve my rank, I love this game and I haven't given up on overcoming this challenge. I'm not ready to believe that improving isn't possible. So I'm hoping you can provide some additional tools I can use to keep trying to climb. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, you, uh, I think, let me check. You put a replay code into the form. I did. We are going to go over that replay. Awesome. And, and again, I just checked I am, to make sure uh, that it worked. Yeah. I, and again, and I actually reviewed it. Too. Okay. I am very, very confident that this is really just a mindset issue. Like, um, not a mindset issue, but I mean, yeah, a mindset issue on like what the support role actually entails. And I feel like once okay. we go into the replay with that mindset, things are going to become very, very, you know, I've never re reviewed a silver VOD where at the end the player get, didn't go, hmm, okay, you know, I feel like, I feel like I could have figured that out on my own. Um, can you see my game? Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't use Discord, this is like... Uh, in the, possible. in the voice channel, you can just double click on my name. I got it. Okay, you um, are Toad Sausage. Yeah, I'm Toad Sausage. There we go. I'll tell you anyway that I should have switched off the Zenyatta faster. Uh, maybe. I mean, Zenyatta is pretty. In, 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 here's the thing. It, it looks um, kind of divey, and I went, okay, I, I see what we're doing here. I see okay, what we're okay. doing. You're, 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 already, you're, you're already overthinking. Um, team comp isn't a concept that becomes even remotely relevant until much, much higher ratings. Because the whole point behind team comp is that you play around a specific win condition. So, for example, okay. the point behind dive is that you try to look for opportunities where someone on the enemy team is isolated, and then you dive them together and you follow up on each other. That doesn't right. happen in low elo. In low elo, each character kind of acts independently of each other. Mm. So I could just play... So, hold on, let me ask this in. So I could just play Mercy or Moira. Um, yeah, you Anna just want to play just, whatever gives you the most... You want to play whatever is going to give you the most, uh, the most impact. So the most Mercy... Utility for the, okay. Um, not utility, whatever allows 
whatever gives you the confidence that you're going to be able to have an impact. So characters okay. like like Moira or Zen or Anna are very good because they're high impact characters. Whereas someone like Mercy, she is only as good as her team. Okay. If you don't have teammates that can take advantage of your damage boost, your damage boost is going to be useless. If your teammates are kind of brain dead, then rezzing them doesn't really do anything either, right? So that's the advantage right. of a character like Zenyatta. Okay, I have watched four seconds of this gameplay and I can already see that my prediction from earlier is correct and you haven't even left spawn. So what is the issue here? Uh, I see that Diva is about to engage and so I toss the healer or Bonner. No, but just, just looking at this. So five seconds have passed, okay? Let's look at those five seconds again. That's what you're going to say. Yeah. Remember that Got whole it. part about, you know, like in WoW, if no one is taking damage in the raid, you know, you fuck around. Maybe you lightning bolt the boss for mana or something. I don't know if that's still a mechanic. Yeah. But, you know, as a healer, when nothing is going on, like I remember grinding Mythic Plus as a healer. And yeah. if it's like a low keystone, I'm just AFK. <laughs> Like yeah. for the entire, I just put, I just, I just follow like whatever, you know, caster is, is on, on, on the team, on the party. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to be back in like 10 minutes. Um, I even, I wrote, I wrote down a note. I was like, why am I just sitting here? I should be doing more damage. Because you, more again, because of what I said earlier, because you fundamentally misunderstand the job. You think I need to heal people. You stand here because you want to support the diva. She's stuck in the junk rat trap. So you put the orb on her, which is good, but that's not what you're here to do. You're here yeah. to fuck people up. Yeah. You're I thought she was going picks. to go and engage. And I was like, I'll toss an orb on you because you're going to dive in there. And I'm going to come in with you. And I'm going to toss my Discord orb. And we're going to nail this. And no, you're not going to do. You're crap. going to do jack shit with her. You put your orb on. The only reason you put your orb on teammates is because it gives you ult charge. What okay. you're here so to do is to okay. screw over the enemy team. To get picks. To get with kills. With those discords. I'm sorry, what's that? With, with my with Discord, yeah. With Discords yeah, and with it. right clicks, mostly. Okay. Right? So instead of chilling here and being AFK for like 10 seconds, right? Yeah. You, what you could have done is before the, the round starts, you know, you can like see, oh, there's people. You, you charge up your right click, you pick around the corner, and you throw your right click down there and see if you can get a pick. Or you start walking out and you move onto the payload, you know? And you, you, you push up and you see where the enemies are and then you see the Hammond and you can shoot him. Or you can walk up to this corner, you charge your right click, pew, go around the corner, shoot your right click. Okay. And then maybe you get a pick like that. Okay. Right? But the problem is during these you during these you always want to try and put yourself into you always want to try to kill people. But okay. and, and, and it's a race because you want to kill people before they kill your team. Yeah. Your teammates want to end, but the enemy team also wants to end. So you need to get kills before your teammates can end. But right okay. here, this doesn't look like a player who's in a rush. This doesn't look like someone who's trying to get kills as fast as possible. You're just waiting for something to happen. The game has been going for 15 seconds. I don't think you've fired yeah. a single shot. You're right. Yep. That's the problem. Okay, now you're shooting people. But A, you're way, way, way too far back. I'm not sure why you're this, like even your Mercy is playing in front of you, right? So you're playing very, very scared, very, very passive all the way in the back. And you're not charging your right click. The reason okay. why your right click is... Um, do you remember that Shaman Totem where it would like soak up all of the like a portion, like the healing that you would do for a little yes. while and then it would like explode? Yes. And then it would explode it. Exactly. Yeah. That's and what she would do is when you knew that you know like I, I don't know if you remember Gorefiend in Hellfire Citadel, he had I like do. Uh, the he big, had, yeah the big yeah fuck that wall of a raid but holy shit but he would have that <laughs> yeah. he he would uh, also I, I don't remember the fight exactly but he would have that phase where he would like suck everyone in and he would take like extra damage and that's where like everyone used cooldowns and whatever yeah right? and they pummeled and yeah exactly yeah. and and the way that you play around those things is that when you know when those phases come you prepare in advance okay right 
uh, you 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 save up on procs. You 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 keep track of like when your trinket is gonna proc or whatever, right? So that when that high damage phase comes, like that's when you pump it all in. Your Zen right click works very very similar, where for a little period of time your DPS is basically zero because you're just charging it up, but then afterwards you unleash it all, right? And yeah. it it has a high chance of getting a pick because if you just left click. You're, you're, you're going to be able to start DPSing faster, but that damage is going to be less bursty. It's going to be more regular. And okay. burst damage is- They can, they can heal through that. Is, exactly. It, burst damage is important because if you land a right click, bam, the enemy is dead. But if you land a left click, you need to land multiple left clicks in a row. So it's much more difficult mechanically. And even if you land them in a row, you're giving the enemy team more time to heal said damage. Okay. So yep. you always, basically as Anyata, you always want to be charging up your right click. Okay. If, if there's no enemy, whatever, you just shoot it into a wall. It doesn't matter. But you always want to either left click or charge up your right click. Okay. Your, your hands as Zen should never be in the position that they're in right now. Literally okay. never. Okay. Well, always firing. Always, yeah. Because a imagine if you had a fully ABS. charged, imagine if you had a fully charged right click right now. You know, like that's a lot of damage that you could have pumped into that discarded Hammond, right? You're right. Or right yep. here, you're 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 spamming your left clicks again, but you're in a in, in a very very scared position. You can. This isn't how you improve. You need to push the limits. You need to be a little more more cocky. You need to see what you okay. can get away with. Okay. Okay. Like what I would do here is I would charge my right click. Like I you know I would see if I could play in this room. I would charge up my right click right here. I would pick out. And then I would just unload that into whoever is in front of me with a small health bar. Okay. Okay, but you need to hunt the enemies more. Rather than just waiting for the Hammond to slam in and waiting for your teammates to die or like someone to appear on a flank, be more proactive. Run in, charge up your right click, see if you can get kills that way. You're so scared of the enemy team that there's no reason for them to be scared of you. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I, like I said, I'm trying to, my mindset, just like you said, was to minimize deaths. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I need exactly. to stay up so that but I your, can help But your job isn't to up. minimize deaths. Yeah. It's to minimize lost team fights. And your passiveness is losing your team fights. All right. Mm -hmm. Because you haven't gotten a single pick so far. And getting picks as a Nyata is how you climb. That's like the main form of impact. Because a single pick can snowball into one team fight, which can snowball into a one map. Right. And obviously, like, I could talk about this trend was fine, by the way. Um, obviously, I could talk about, like, mechanics and how good your aim is and everything, but that's not really super duper important because, A, this is console. So, you know, console mechanics are always going to be a little awkward. Um, and since you're going to switch over to, to, to PC eventually, you know, it's not too important to talk about. Um, I mean, I yeah, like, like I your, your, yeah, I mean, your, your, re your reaction time there was just kind of... Uh, you know, a little galactic in scale. Yeah, it was it was m way slow. I was standing in the middle and I looked up and went, "Hey, there's a McCree." I mean, oh, yeah, you probably could have just. There's you a probably, McCree. You know, if you had a, if, you, if you had a charge right click, you could have just deleted him right there, and then you switch to Moira now, and you have some major controller drift. Okay, um, why did you switch to Moira? Um, because I didn't feel like oh I was providing God. enough value. Exactly, you weren't well, providing see? enough value because you're just. Yeah. Putting harmony orb just, on people, and yeah, you know, I you're like, like yeah. you said, it wasn't telling anything. Yeah. Nobody was uh, was capitalizing on the discords. I wasn't capitalizing on the discords. I went, all right, yeah. he killed me. Let's switch. I can do more utility here as Moira. Yeah. Okay. And then right here, you run out of spawn, and you immediately throw out your healing orb. This is a I problem because okay. your your healing orb is stealing away your ult charge. What do you mean? It's stealing away oil charge from your left click. Okay. Well, because from my let's damage. say let's say your teammates have a total health deficit of like two hundred HP. Okay. Right. That is two hundred HP worth of oil charge. If you heal that up with your heal orb, you're going to get two hundred HP worth of oil charge. Okay. Okay. But if instead you throw in a damage orb into the enemy team and just left click your teammates, you're still going to get the 200 HP worth of ult charge of plus healing up the, the damage, plus the damage from the orb. So using damage orb is always better 
because there's an, an a, a theoretically infinite supply of health on the enemy team but there's only so much healing you can do on your team so you want to use the more disposable like the less flexible resource for healing your teammates which is your left click because your left click can't deal damage okay. to people yeah all right that makes sense yeah and then with your yeah, orb you want to a make sure so much yeah exactly and that's the, the the mindset that you have from wow because in, in wow like preemptive heals are very important because uh you know well, when i was playing resto shami in in siege of orgrimmar i would just yeah. spam chain heal during the oh, the, yeah. the, the the i don't know the fight like with the with the You're conveyor yeah, you're, belts you're, and you're whatever healing exactly yeah. because it's a smart heal to. and and i want to start the cast because once the cast is finished like when i start the cast everyone is full hp but maybe yeah. once the cast is done someone is low hp and then it's smart heals to them and then they yeah, you're you know, chaining it exactly yeah exactly but, like you should in wow and, to and keep people alive. <laughs> exactly but in overwatch that's not how it works like you're using your healing orb right in in that way even if people don't like technically need it you just use it to support your heals to make sure that when someone takes damage the orb is already there and it's like making it easier for you to keep people afloat right okay. um but that's because in wow healing can you the the the, the it, it's balanced in a way where with like you know three or four healers they can out heal all of the incoming damage during the entire encounter but in overwatch that's a futile we can't. task yeah yeah you can't you can postpone deaths but you can never just completely prevent them unless you have like immortality field or something like that i just realized mm -hmm. you're not gonna be happy with the mercy play on this uh i mean we'll, we'll, we'll see i mean again so far like really you could have already had your ultimate if you would have just damaged orb to be honest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah this honestly I, I, I okay. you really just need to get out of this wow mindset is the is so that aside is my mm -hmm. positioning crazy other than i'm way too far back right yeah but i'm trying not to die no your positioning is so, fine like the, the the concepts like the you know using cover and corners and everything that's perfectly fine okay your movement is also fine you know given that you're using a, a controller so you can't like on see, a controller I, you can't ad strafe properly of course no i see yeah. and i'm using that primarily 70 percent to heal my team because I don't want them to die because they just had a massive team encounter and I saw them starting yeah. to drop and I with went, your, you with know, your ultimate as Moira right you now. just want to maximize how many people you hit whether they're teammates okay. or enemies like the more people the okay. better basically um, but yeah like right here why damage or, or why heal orb you know just damage orb you can kill the Moira yeah. no problemo mm -hmm. because look you can't heal the Hammond forever you know it's better to help get rid of the damage sources than to try to out heal them okay that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, like that McCree, if you would have damaged Orb, you would already be dead. And the sooner I didn't you kill the up. enemies... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hear, I hear what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I, I don't have trouble getting away from them. I mean, I can usually escape a fight on Moira. Right? It's not a problem. Yeah. But I hear what you're saying is, instead of escaping, like, kill them. Kick their yeah. ass. Yeah, like, <laughs> even no your position here, you know, like, I would literally stand on the cart and I would just suck the Hammond or, or you know, whoever okay. is coming around. Okay. And you're going to die a lot, of course, okay. but that's you, you need to learn how to survive while also being useful. It's okay. easy to stay alive if you just sit behind your like entire team all the time and, and you're a heal bot. But okay. that doesn't win you but team that's fights. Not, yeah, that's not helping yeah. with the team fight. Yeah, like right there, you use your healing orb, even though everyone is full HP. Like, do you see how the healing orb just traveled super fast through everyone? It does that when yeah. it can't find someone to attach to. Right. Do you see how it didn't attach to literally anyone? Right. Yep. It's wasted. There it Bye. goes. Completely useless. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't want to get shot by that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's why I jumped that's, over. That's okay. Damage orb. Go. Okay, all right, yeah, I will see, throw, like, I, yeah. this, you will you will almost never see me throw one so yeah. and that like I said that's something that I recently adjusted to but I can absolutely go back to the way that I was doing it before which is yeah. damage when I see a group of enemies damage orb suck my team's down heal 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 we're fine let's just keep going yeah that ultimate was actually okay. earlier you kind of ulted the wall yeah I ulted early well yeah. I was behind them right in that in that room 
And so I went around yeah. and went, okay, no one will kill me if I ult from here, because then I can just... Yeah, but then you're also, like, wasting counter. half your ultimate on a wall. <laughs> yep, yep, that's exactly what yeah. happened. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're, yeah this is... Mm. This, this actually looks like this is giving me flashbacks of dungeon <laughs> runs. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, because the... The core mechanic here for Moira, the fact that she runs out of healing is one of the things that pisses me off the most. And if so I you're have to running really out of healing, things. if you're running yeah. out of healing, the team fights last too long. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm like, I need to boost it with an orb. I need to stay out of the way. I need to give them a little squirt squirt so that they get the, the two seconds, you know? No, you just need to throw out damage orbs. Yep. And then you're right. use your ultimate. And then the team just fights don't even last long enough for you to run out of healing charge. Makes sense. Well, that's good. That doesn't sound like a humongous adjustment. It really <laughs> it is would, not. Like, it would that's be what, worse that's what if I it mean. was like... like... When, when, okay. Whenever, like, I always get very excited when people write down that they play the game, like, a lot. Like, 30 plus hours, but they're in a super shitty rating. Because it means that there's, like, one really fundamental thing. Like, one switch that they just need to flick and bam, they're gonna shoot up, like, 1500 SR or something. Would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I play a lot. Yeah, like look how far back you're standing. Holy moly! I, I don't want to die. You're yeah, right. Exactly. That's you it. Have I don't your, want to die. You have your fade as Moira. Who's going to kill you? I, you're right. I know. I don't want to die. Yeah. Blizzard, no, like like right. Overwatch, the developers, they gave you fade for a reason because they made Moira a short ranged character, who needs to get close to the enemy team to replenish her healing resource. They yeah. built her in a way that puts her into aggressive positions. She can't position like a mercy in the back. She needs to position aggressively. Otherwise, she's going to run out of juice or she's not going to be able to heal people. She needs to get close right. to the front line to heal people. In order right. to compensate for that, they gave her fade. Okay. The reason Tracer has recall is because she has 150 HP and because she doesn't deal any damage over a long range. She needs to get close to people. If Tracer didn't have recall, what are you, you know, what's, what are you going to do? You're just going to sit behind your Reinhardt shield and like, you know, tickle the enemies? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, the kinda, kinda. I don't, yeah. I don't know why I healed that. I think I had like, a panic e Even moment. here, you're so scared. Like this drunkard has two HP and you're still playing like he could just one shot you. So can much he? respect. He can do it with bomb and kill me. So much. Well, yeah, but you can fade. And again, you're under the assumption that he's actually going to hit his shots. Like Moira is 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 uh, like literally anorexic. Okay, good point. And he's silver. This isn't. And he's using a controller. Like silver players with a controller. Like there's a reason he plays junk red. It's because he doesn't know how to aim. That's really funny. My first character that I started out on was Junkrat. I went, I don't have to aim at all. Oh, well, trust me. If I would start playing console, I would probably just play Junkrat and like Farah all day long. So this fight is over. I'll abandon it. Yeah, I mean. I'll abandon. I go, look, everybody's dead. Get the hell out yeah. of there. Abandon. We're, you're all dead. Goodbye. Yeah. Also, time Same flies by when you're having fun because we're at the last five minutes. And this is the part where you can like ask uh, kind of, you know, questions and stuff. So it sounds like just, at, I mean, fun, like fun, fundamentally, right? I need to focus on shortening the team fight, ideally, by using more of my damage and getting my ult faster. I mean, like key, key, I wrote down a bunch of notes, but key stuff is I need to generate my ult faster. I need to do that by making sure that I'm contributing to killing things. You want the enemy team, team to fights. be scared of you. You want them okay. to add you at the end of the game and tell you to kill yourself. <laughs> okay, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. All right. So what about with... Um, so I, I know that we're at the, obviously the last five minutes. So what about with Mercy Play? Mercy Play is totally different then, right? Yeah. One of the things that I started doing... Um, I watched the OWL Finals and I watched Moss um, POV when they did against they were against Atlanta. Yeah. And one thing that I noticed that I guess I hadn't really considered before was I never saw the enemy team. 
I think I saw them once at the very end. Well, yeah, I mean, because the there's no reason end. for Mercy to see the enemy team. There's nothing. Okay. There's nothing she like. With Moira, exactly. you need to see the enemy team so you can right click okay. and orb them. But yes. Mercy, there is not a single part of her kit that requires her to have line of sight with the enemies. So okay, why perfect. give them line of sight? Because they okay. get something so, out of it. So that's how I've been playing Mercy. At least, yeah. And this was like, oh god, I don't know if you're going to like this. but Oh no, that's, I mean, that's, I that is how you so play that... Mercy. Yeah, because again, there's okay, no reason perfect. for you to expose perfect. yourself to the enemies. You don't get anything out of it and they get something out of it. Okay, it's uh, perfect. The, the, the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals or whatever. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, should, okay. My other question was, I wrote down, I should have switched from Zen sooner, right? You look at the the beginning of that fight. Uh, no, I because knew this probably... is low elo, and you can literally throw a dice at the start of a round to choose what character to play. So it doesn't um, matter. It, it, at this really. rating, it really doesn't matter. Like well, the, the the fundamentals are what's what's really important. Um, okay. Once you get to like around platinum, I'd say that's maybe when you should start to think a little bit about team comp, and you know okay. how how you fit into it. But but right now, it's just focus on you know being being a threat to the enemy team getting like these basics basics down okay. because you, your then teammates I... aren't reliable yet so you don't want to rely on on team comp and stuff okay that's a perfect lead into my last question which is yes. hanamura first point on attack yep. why the fuck doesn't my team ever move in past that goddamn joke um, i hate it because, because then i lose fights they are I'm just sitting like there. you and they're yeah. scared of dying they don't want to die so what should I do in this? Should I just consider um, a watch? So, there's, so, so basically there's two football? ways. No, no, there's two ways you get through a choke. Um, either you get a pick or you farm up ultimates. The easiest okay. part is for you to just go Moira and to farm up your coalescence and then you press Q or triangle or whatever it is on, on console. Yeah. Um, and when your teammates see the coalescence, that gives them the confidence to go in. Okay. That's something that one of my friends pointed out was... Um, either know, that, or we you can also go Brigitte and do the same thing with Rally. Like, the, the ultimates are basically... Or Lucio with both. Beat, or... Um, yeah, well, well, not so much Lucio Beat, because Lucio Beat doesn't last as long. Um, okay. But as, Rally's good for that. Yeah, yeah, like, Lucio Beat is, is a little too... So, so Rally is, like, basically the engage ultimate, or Coalescence. Um, Coalescence is generally better, uh, better, because it's easier to charge for you. Like, as Brig, you rely a lot on your team to like be able to farm ult charge um but with yeah. moira you have the damage orb so you can farm your ultimate a lot more consistently okay that makes sense yeah okay so that i have notes thank you so what should i do i'm gonna work on these things obviously should i take another should i send you another vod for the next time or what do we do next session uh yeah you just send, send an, another vod hopefully having implemented the changes and then we yes. continue from there Awesome. Yay, this okay. is so helpful. Thank you. I'm so no happy. problemo. You can go, uh, wait for me a second. You can use this link. Wait. Um, oh my god. My key, I, okay, my keyboard is being stupid. Every single time I type backslash, it also puts a dot there. Oh no. I, you have a keyboard, right? Oh I no, it's, it's it. like the two keys are stuck. Okay, there we go. Now I think it works. Okay. Violence is usually the answer. <laughs> okay, so you can use this link to schedule the next session, and you can use this link to write a review, which is always super duper appreciated. If you have any questions, just DM me in the same chat that I sent you those links at, and I'll see you soon. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, Godspeed, have a good one. See ya. <laughs> you too, bye.